My name is Dahlia Nair. I'm currently based in Los Angeles, California. I am a choreographer, a dancer, a dance teacher, and I make multimedia works with um, other artists. I'm really interested right now in creating a body of work that explores the performance of the quiet. I'm interested in unlikely sources of virtuosity and the role of memory and imagining, reimagining the past. And part of my interest in the performance of the quiet is to offer an experience of dance that isn't spectacle or entertainment, but truly feeling and sensing in our bodies um, for our own, our own consciousness, and then also uh, connecting with others in a way that we might not otherwise uh, have an opportunity to do in our daily lives. In our piece, we never actually identify the countries or the languages um, that are in it. Um, we don't think of the piece as representing nation. We think of it as expressing a, an experience of being in between and of multiplicity. The poem is called Make Believe and I love this poem for so many reasons. Um, first of all, the sense of time. I love how he pulls out of time just from the start. He says we will eventually be archaeology. So right from there you have this sense of thousands of years, you know, we will be the dinosaurs one day. We will be, you know, it's our bones that will be found in the dirt. We will eventually be archaeology, but now, in America, I tell my young daughter, the new headlights are a bluish white instead of the murky yellow of my upbringing. She's busy with her bubble making, her dig in the flower bed, her pantomimed banquet, phantom guests dining on her small handfuls of weeds and grasses. Precisely, the lit up jackrabbits appear in peculiar blue candor under the stoplight dusk. Pigeons, hued reddish, are garrulous and incomprehensible as drunks at the end of the cocktail hour. It's that time in America when the air is overgrowth. The piquancy of coriander neighbors allowed to flower mingles with fragrances we douse our clothesline laundry in each week to cloister the body's reeking. Truck smoke from the interstate. I'm out of doors, which is to say nature is hemmed in by doors, which is to say nature is a category of my own making. And I can't say why the skittish black bugs flit into the house when there's so much turf afforded to them already. But tonight I'll crush a few with a Newsweek before sleeping. Now it's that time in America in the out of doors beneath tree and trellis and vapor trails of overnight flights fare thee welling to London and Morocco brandy and soda water, a xylophone jingle of the ice. I sit in my Adirondack without my minute Midwestern wife who Tuesday returns from her summit in Cleveland. It's that time when I'm alone in America with my young daughter who startles herself, realizing the woodpile beneath that black oak is itself formerly a tree. And she wants to know whether these trees have feelings. It's this acquaintance with death she so improves upon annually. It's in this precise moment in America that I realize this acquainting, this becoming familiar, this cordiality with death is the entire task of her growing older. Next year, her ficus will die, and the next year, her minnow will die. And it's in these moments in America when my daughter's plump lip quivers in a preface to bawling, 
when I'm alone and can do too little. I say, I'm sorry life is too much, my love. I'm sorry, my love, it isn't enough.